There's a reason football is dubbed the beautiful game. From sights to sounds, victories to defeats, and fierce rivalries, fewer sports take you through the motions like football. Even better, every football competition comes with its unique atmosphere and elements that make it beloved by fans. Well, let's find out, shall we? Suffice it to say that Cristiano Ronaldo's name will go down in football as arguably the best player to ever step on a pitch. His legacy is filled with records for club and country, and the Euros is just another competition where the lethal forwards left his mark. Since debuting in the competition in 2004, Ronaldo scored 14 goals across all five tournaments held to date. In his opening campaign, he scored twice, followed by another goal contribution in 2008. Oh, did we mention that he managed to get into the Euros final on his first try? Yeah, Portugal made the final in 2004. In 2012 and 2016, Cristiano was just as lethal in front of goal, contributing three further goals in each tournament and a further five at Euro 2020. He also won the trophy on his fourth try in 2016, in easily the most heartfelt way possible. The Saudi Pro League talisman looks set to play in the competition for the last time this year. So, do you think he'll add to this impressive record? The 1968 tournament was a monumental event that saw one of the largest gatherings of spectators ever in the history of modern football. But why? What match could attract so many fans? Well, it was a match between England and Scotland. See, while current fixtures between both countries are standard, the world of 1968 was vastly different. And if you know anything about the history of the United Kingdom and how Britain came to be a world-dominating empire, you're just about up to speed on what their Scottish, Welsh, and Irish neighbours think of them. So, a match between the three lines and the Tartan army was sure to draw a lot of attention. What no one could have predicted, though, was that 130,000 spectators would show up for the match. In 1976, Czechoslovakia ran out as winners of the Euros, beating West Germany in a tightly contested match that went to penalties. An entertaining 5-3 rout saw Czechoslovakia crown champions at the Germans' expense. Besides putting on an impressive performance in the final, the cup was the first major victory the country had won. So, when the next Euro tournament returned four years later in 1980, Czechoslovakia entered as defending champions. However, their path to the competition was hard won. For one, they almost missed out on qualification. If that wasn't enough of a sign of things to come, they got drafted into the same group as West Germany. Even better, the opening match was Czechoslovakia versus West Germany, an exact reenactment of the final four years ago. The Germans carried a grudge and did not attempt to hide it, beating the defending champions 1-0 before going on to win the competition. Although multiple teams have won the Euro since the competition first began, some have won it more than others. Spain and Germany in particular share the record of the most cup wins, with three trophies each. Despite being considered underperformers for some time, Spain has had a pretty decent record in the Euros. They first won it in 1964, which was the icing on the cake given that they were the hosts. Then they won it again in back-to-back -back fashion in 2008 and 2012, and are the only team to ever win the competition consecutively. Germany, on the other hand, won the competition under different banners. First in 1972, when they played hosts Belgium in the final and won 2-1. Except it wasn't the German national team we know now, but West Germany. Eight years later, West Germany repeated the heroics to win the cup for the second time. The third time the country lifted the much-coveted trophy, it was under a unified banner in 1996, when they beat the Czech Republic, which was no longer Czechoslovakia, in the final. These days, football games are often decided by 90 minutes. If that's not enough, the match goes to extra time and then penalties, should the match still be tied after extra time. However, in 1968, a match was decided by a coin toss after both teams came up nil-nil by the end of extra time. This match was between the Soviet Union and Italy. The Glee and Zuri were not having the best of times playing against the Red Army, and given their history, it was unlikely that they'd get the better of the latter. In their last two meetings, Italy had lost both times. In 1968, penalties were not a thing. Yeah, as wild as that sounds, when extra time came to an end, just about everyone was clueless about what to do. 
Then the referee suggested a coin toss, which both teams agreed to. And with a flip, the Italians got one over the Soviet Union for the first time in three meetings. Huge victory margins are not new in football, but that doesn't mean they're common either. In the history of the Euros, there have been at least five countries that have won a match by five goals. In 1984, France pummeled Belgium 5-0. In that same year, Denmark subjected Yugoslavia to the same thrashing. Fast forward to the year 2000, and the Netherlands schooled Yugoslavia 6-1. Four years later, Sweden enjoyed a 5-0 thumping of Bulgaria. Even as recently as 2020, we were still treated to a 5-0 thriller when Spain spanked Slovakia. At this point, a five-goal margin is almost a tradition at the Euros. Now, we just talked about the highest victories recorded in the Euros. What about the highest goal scored in a match? For this one, credit goes to the match between Yugoslavia and France at the inaugural Euros tournament in 1969. Of course, Yugoslavia was involved. When aren't they? However, they weren't the victims this time. They played out hosts, France, to a 5-4 thriller that entertained and wowed spectators. An honorable mention also goes to the match between Germany and San Marino in 2006. The wacky low lens site thumped San Marino 13-0 to qualify for the tournament in 2008, with Lukas Podolski putting in a stellar display to claim four goals. The Panenka is a penalty technique that either comes off as genius or extremely foolish. There is no in-between. If a player manages to fool the keeper, it becomes a flawless chip shot. But if the keeper is unfazed and catches the ball, the player is ridiculed. Despite direct shots having better conversion odds, Panenkas are still being played to date. But where did it come from? We have Antonin Panenka to thank. He was an otherwise unknown footballer until the 1976 Euros, when he stepped up and took the penalty with a chip shot to win the match for his country. The match, in particular, was the tightly contested final between Czechoslovakia and West Germany in 1976, so you can just imagine why it became famous and remains a lasting football legacy to date. Although it seemed like Yugoslavia enjoyed a 5-0 loss margin often, they aren't the team in the competition with the most defeats. Instead, this honor goes to Denmark. The Red and Whites have had a horrid record, with 17 games lost to the Euros. Usually, the Golden Boot winner at football tournaments goes to the player with the highest amount of goals. Although it's uncommon, two players sometimes tie for the Golden Boot by the end of a tournament. But that wasn't the case at the 2012 Euros, where several players finished as the top scorers. It wasn't one, or two, or even three, but six different players, who included Germany's Mario Gomez, Portugal's Cristiano Ronaldo, Italy's Mario Balotelli, Croatia's Mario Mandzukic, Spain's Fernando Torres, and Russia's Alan Zagoyev. The award was eventually awarded to Fernando Torres, since he scored goals in fewer minutes than the others. Brutal call, that. In a competition that has the likes of Sergio Ramos and Pepe, you'd expect red cards to flow like a river. But neither of these players holds the record for the most red cards. That record belongs to Radoslav Latal. The Czech Republic player was shown red twice in the competition, first in 1996 and then four years later in 2000. It was almost like he couldn't wait to get off the pitch the second time. Before Michel Platini became a tainted name in football politics, he was easily one of the greatest players in the Euros. He holds the record for the most hat-tricks in the competition. The best part is that both hat-tricks came in the same year. When France faced off against both Yugoslavia and Belgium in 1984, Platinum chipped in with six goals, three per match. For the next three games that year, he scored three more goals to take his tally to nine goals as France hunted down the title. An honorable mention goes to German forward Dieter Müller, who came off the bench in the 79th minute to bang in a hat-trick against Yugoslavia in 1976. Another entrant into Cristiano Ronaldo's already decked-out Hall of Records is becoming the player with the most appearances at the Euros. The former Red Devils and Los Blancos giant has featured in every Euros tournament for Portugal since first making his debut in 2004. The 39-year-old Al Nasser forward is set to play his sixth tournament this year. What a player! If the words, time waits for no one, were a football goal, it would be Dmitry Kirichenko's belter against Greece in 2004. 
The Russian tore through the Greek backline like a bat out of hell, coming on one with the keeper. But that wasn't enough to stop him, as he slotted the ball into the back of the net in just 67 seconds. The Russians would go on to win the match 2-1, courtesy of a second goal that came just 15 minutes later. Here comes another bit of Euro history that involves, wait for it, Yugoslavia. In the 1992 tournament, Yugoslavia qualified for the Euros, but were kicked out two weeks before the start of the tournament by UEFA due to the war going on within the country. Denmark, who hadn't qualified for the event, got the rare opportunity to replace the disqualified nation. What makes this piece of history crazy is that the Danes went on to win the competition, beating Germany 2-0 in the final. The Czech Republic is one of the best teams participating in the Euros, so it's no surprise that they've had three key matches dragged into extra time and penalties. However, what puts them on this list is that all three penalty shootouts have turned out in their favor. That's a 100% record that's yielded 20 goals from the penalty spot. What are the odds? Here's another edition of Yugoslavia in history. This edition of the competition was held in Yugoslavia. What makes it interesting is that just about every match dragged on into extra time. It was the most dramatic sports competition ever. Even the final didn't end in regular time or extra time and was ultimately decided by penalties when Czechoslovakia pipped West Germany to the trophy-winning 5-3. Speaking of unimaginable events, the 2004 Euros was another lesson in surprises. Hosts Portugal made it to the final, where they faced a Greece side that started the competition in the most unconvincing way possible. What no one could have predicted was that the shaky Greek team would beat Portugal 1-0 to claim the trophy. And we do not mean that lightly. Keep in mind that Greece had only qualified for the Euros and World Cup once at this point. So, imagine the shock and horror when bookies realized how much they'd have to pay out after giving Greece a 150 to 1 odds of winning the tournament. What other crazy things happened at the Euros that we missed? Please like, comment, share and subscribe if you enjoyed this video.